common problems in sailor song. The biggest common problem that I hear in sailor song is with the intonation, or an inconsistent pitch, particularly with the C sharps on the A string and the F sharps on the D string. It's important that your students understand the finger patterns and can play their finger patterns in tune. That's why in every teaching companion that I write, and this one's available on teachingorchestra.com, I start every teaching companion with finger patterns. It's important that each student plays in tune before you move on to the next note. Okay, if E is not in tune, do not move on to F sharp. If F sharp is in tune, do not move on to G. I don't care if you have to stop the whole orchestra and tune everybody's G individually and then have them all play together again. Do not move on because you will ruin their ears. It's important to get them to understand what is in tune and what is out of tune and to come together as an orchestra to play together and develop that culture of tuning. An exercise that I like to use with my students is I have them slide into pitch. So if they can't get the F sharp in tune, I have them pick a note higher on the D string that's not an F sharp, and I have them slide back into F sharp because it creates an assumption that their finger's in the wrong place because I just told them, hey, pick a spot that's not an F sharp, that's higher than F sharp on your D string, and they, they play it, and I sustain, and then I give them a cue and they slide back down until it locks into F sharp, and it really clears up the tuning because they have to listen to be able to find that spot. Whereas if you're just doing the finger patterns and they're sitting on an out of tune note and they refuse to fix it, it's because they think they're in tune. The assumption isn't that they're out of tune. So you have to create that assumption. I demonstrate this video in season one, episode three, if you wanna see how I do it with my students in the classroom. Uh, you can check that out. And there's also some other tips and tricks on intonation sometimes the technique gets in the way of intonation and sometimes it's a cultural thing. And when I say culture, and I have to explain this a lot because some people get it confused with ethnicity. I don't think that certain races or ethnic groups can play in tune better than others. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying culture is unique to your orchestra and every orchestra has its own culture. You know, your school has a culture. What's the culture like at your school? Is it a good culture? Is it a toxic culture? You know, that's something that your hopefully your administration helps to fix for, for, for teachers. And then, you know, as teachers, we try to create a good classroom culture. And so pitch has a cultural side and it also has a technical side. And in season one, episode three, I try to address both sides. The next common problem with Sailor Song are the dynamics. And most of the time, everybody's playing forte. In fact, the low strings, they start forte and they stay forte the entire piece. They have no dynamic changes at all. The high strings, on the other hand, over here at measure 15, they get down to piano. The first violins have the A theme at seven, and then the low strings have the A theme at 15. So here at seven, everybody is playing pizzicato. At 15, the high strings are playing arco. So I think that this piano was probably indicated uh, to help out with balance and to make sure that the melody could be heard. So yeah, we wanna play soft here, but the intent of it is just to make sure that the low strings are heard on their A theme section. So one thing that you can do is you can have your low strings play closer to the bridge, and low strings have the tendency to play up onto the fingerboard. Well, even upper strings do that too as well, but uh, low strings, sometimes because of the tension, they're pinky on every up, up bow, they get closer and closer to the fingerboard and they're playing over the fingerboard and they get rosin all over the fingerboard and it's just a mess. So have them play closer to the bridge and try to have them keep a good bowling lane uh, so that they, they play close to the bridge. Here at measure 23, violins and violas are forte again and they stay forte throughout the rest of the piece. Just fix the bow hands and in bowing lanes of your low strings, and that shouldn't be a problem. Make sure that they're playing in good bowing lanes so that they can project on their instruments. And yeah, you can take the high strings down too. I mean, that, that should be fairly easy, but I think the primary purpose for that dynamic indication is a balance issue more than anything. And speaking of balance, that's not the only place in here that we have balance issues. Probably the biggest place that we have balance issues is right here at measure 31. And the problem here is that it's just violas. Now, the high strings don't play along with them. It's just violas all by themselves first for the first four measures, and then second violins are gonna join them. And it's written here, some cellists might think, well, I'm just gonna play this as double stops. 
I'm just going to crush this and their forte anyway. So they, this can really cause balance problems. So one thing that I would suggest is to play Davisi here. It's not marked non-Davisi. I would have them play Davisi here so that the violas can be heard and, and make sure the violas are playing in a good bowing lane as well and, and have your lower strings back off. Same thing at 35 when your first violins come in, have them come into VC. I know that violas are getting support from the second violins here, but they can definitely be overbearing if they're not careful. Another thing that you can do here in Sailor Song is you can add a third violin part or you can just have the second violins play this part at 35. You can just have them play it twice, except the first time that you have them play through, they're gonna play A, D here instead of two Bs. I hear a lot of orchestras do really well at Sailor Song, and then they get to the very last four measures, and there are a lot of problems. And some of them are rhythmic, some of them are rushing, some of them are note length. So don't neglect the end of Sailor Song. You know, sometimes we start at the beginning and we rehearse and then the bell rings, we run out of time, we don't always get to the end. So maybe start rehearsal at the end one day, maybe do it more than one day, maybe do it for a week. And the teaching companion, available on teachingorchestra.com. I have them address this rhythm. It's the only time they have this rhythm in the whole piece, and this kind of rhythm can push you forward, particularly if you're not playing the eighth notes in the right part of the bow. So the goal here at 58, for this second half note in the first violin part should be to get back towards the middle or lower middle of the bow so that they can play this quarter note here and be towards the middle for this entire pattern. These downbeats can rush to for sure because anytime there's a rest and students don't internalize the beat and they don't set the bow and prepare, this can rush. Okay, cellos have the same thing as violins, same thing with their half notes, same strategy. Uh, basses play two, and then they don't have anything in 61, and they have to do one, two, three, rest. So hopefully 62 lands at the same time, but we need to make sure that all of the notes are long in 62, and the last note is full value all the way to beat four and not accented. We don't want to go one, two, three, and just really crush the last note. That's not going to be good because this is actually the end of a phrase. Well, I hope you enjoyed my take on Sailor's Song, and I hope your students enjoy playing this piece, and hope the tips that I gave you make them sound really good on their concert or performance. And if you have any comments, you can leave them down in the comments section, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you in the next video.